Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. Now in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of my selected lectures from my eight hour introduction to Windows Server 2016 for beginners course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. Now that we have our Windows 10 PC one added to our domain as a computer account, we can go ahead and we can take a look at Active Directory user accounts. So one of the most common things that you'll probably be doing as an Active Directory administrator, as a systems administrator, is dealing with user accounts simply because users are going to have issues. They're going to have issues with changing their account, possibly getting themselves locked out of their account by typing in their password incorrectly too many times and just having issues with their account in addition to you having to add new accounts for new employees and deactivating accounts for people that are leaving the organization. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we can manage Active Directory user accounts. So within Server Manager, we're going to go to Tools. We're going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers. And let me go ahead and minimize server manager and I'm already on the user's container. What you're going to notice in here is that there are three different user accounts listed, our administrator account, the default account and a guest account. And it tells you the description here. And let me actually expand this out a little bit. And then in addition to that, we have multiple different security groups pre-added within Active Directory. Just like there are security groups on our local system before we added it to Active Directory. Now what you're going to notice with these is that there is a domain local, a global, and a universal security account. For this course you really don't need to worry about that but if you're going to go on and you plan on being an Active Directory domain administrator and you plan on taking certification specifically the Microsoft Technical Associate or the MCSA or the MCSE certification exams you're going to need to know the difference between these three. By default if we create a new one it's going to go as a global account and just for testing purposes with a single domain in this environment that's perfectly fine. But once you start adding multiple different domain controllers, maybe you have multiple different domains and you want to make sure you have the appropriate security group, then that's where you need to know the difference between these. But with a single domain controller, just keeping it at global is perfectly fine. Now, in terms of adding a user account, we can right click here on users, go to new and select user. And it's going to give us a pop-up for a new object, a user object. So I'm going to go ahead and create one for myself. So I'm going to type in my name, Alton Harden. And for a user login, fairly common practice to do the first initial and then the last name up to a certain amount of characters. So I'll do a Harden and then I'll click next. And then I'm going to type in a password. And what you'll notice is that by default, it's check marked for user must change password at next login. This is best practices. So this way, when an administrator creates new accounts, the user is given a temporary password and then they create their own unique password. Now you could have the user go ahead and sit there in a small organization and while the administrators create an account you can have them type it in but that's just a lot of work. It's a lot easier just to have some temporary passwords that you can give out to your users and have them change at their first login. So we'll leave that at default but you'll notice that you can also list user cannot change the password, the password never expires, expires or the account is disabled. Disabled. Now I would never recommend user cannot change the password or the passwords never expired. Now the account disabled, the only reason you would do this is if you're creating a bunch of new user accounts for people that you know are going to be coming into the organization on a certain date but they're not there yet. So let's say HR has notified you that they're hiring 20 people and you know their start dates so well you can go ahead ahead of time create their accounts and list them as disabled and then the day that they're joining the organization you can go ahead and enable their account. So let's go ahead and click next and it gives us the details of the account and click finish. And here's the new account down here. Now if we double click on this or if we right click and go to properties what you're going to notice is that it gives us the properties for that account. So we can add in some additional information 
in regards to our user account in addition to what we were able to do initially. So a description, office, telephone number, email, web address. If we go on address, we could put an address for that person. Let's say we have multiple different offices. We could put the specific address that they're at here. For the account tab, this is where we'll be doing a lot of different things as administrators. So if you wanted to find login hours, you can click here. And you'll notice by default when we create an account, this person is able to log in 24 seven. So from midnight to midnight, each day, 24 hours, Sunday through Saturday. Well, what if we wanted this person only to be able to log in Monday through Tuesday, we can go here, click and hold, and then change that to login denied. And let's say that we didn't want this person working on the weekends, we could do the same thing. If we wanted this person to only work during certain hours during the week, we could do the same thing as well. So let's say if we wanted to do from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and let's make sure that I have this set up properly, highlight all this, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So now this account, if we applied this, this account would only be able to log into the system from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Now, I'm not going to set that limitation, but this is something that you might do within an organization because maybe you only want people logging in during their work hours and not having the ability to log in outside of their work hours. Now, if we take a look at this here, unlock account, so you can define as an administrator, you can define the threshold of the amount of times that a person can erroneously type in a password before it locks out of their account. And if it does lock them out, this will be check mark, and then you can click this and unlock their account here manually. And this is something that you'll be doing regularly because people forget their passwords. And uh, we can set thresholds for the account lockout policy. Now, by default, the account lockout policy isn't set. So with Windows 10 and also Active Directory, so we can also do it on our local computers, we have to activate this policy and by default, it's not enabled. Now, we can also set the duration for this as well. So we can determine how many minutes they're gonna be logged out or how many minutes they're gonna be locked out of their account. So if we wanna make it two minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we can define that as well. Now. We're not gonna do that in this video, but I just wanted to go over that. We can also see some account options down here, some of them that we've seen before, and one that you'll use quite often is the account is disabled. So we talked about this with new accounts, but when somebody leaves the organization, it's best practices not to delete the account, but to disable it for IT auditing reasons. So we wanna keep their files in places, we wanna keep audit logs in places regarding them. Uh, we wanna keep it in place in terms of not only auditing, but if somebody else needs access to those files as well, then they're there as well. So we wanna make sure that we don't delete the account and their associated files. And then there's some additional information and details down here as well regarding the account. And then also if the account, let's say it's a temporary account, maybe we have a contractor that's coming in as a consultant and we have a contract with them for a month. Well, we can have the account auto expire on a specific day by defining it here as well. So lots of different things that we would do within the account tab. The profile tab is where we can do things such as setting a login script that runs or defining a specific local path for a home folder for a network drive. And then also some additional information, telephone information, organizational information as well, uh, remote control and remote login as well for remote desktop services. We're not gonna get into that in this video. And then of course, if we click on member of, this is an important one as administrator. So let's say that somebody's coming in as another domain administrator and you need to add them to that group, you would do it under the member of by clicking add. You could type in the name of the group if you know it. If you don't, simply click on advance and do a find now and it'll go ahead and pre-populate everything. And we can go ahead and scroll down. Let's say we wanna add somebody to the domain administrators group. Click here, highlight it, hit okay. You'll notice it's listed here, hit okay. Now it's gonna be listed here, hit apply. And now this user is a domain administrator. And then several different other tabs as well. So another thing regarding Active Directory users and computers, we can go to view and we can change it to advanced 
features as well. And what you're going to notice is that there's going to be additional containers here listed. And if we go back to users, and if we go back to this account that we created, if we double click on it, there's going to be multiple different tabs as well. So you may find that this is overwhelming at first, but over time, having these additional tabs are definitely going to benefit you. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them in place. So let's go ahead and create another account. So we'll go to users, new, and we'll go user, and then we'll go ahead and type in an account for Joe Smith. Give him a username of Jay Smith, click next, and we'll go ahead and give him a temporary password. And hit oh, next and hit finished, and now we have two accounts. So now what we can do is we'll demonstrate logging in with one of these accounts for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up VirtualBox Manager. And we'll go ahead and we'll start up our Windows 10 PC1. And we'll leave this up and running. We can go ahead and minimize it. And we'll go ahead and let this restore. So I ended up reverting this back to a snapshot so it loads faster. What I'm going to do is make this full screen. I'm going to go ahead and take this and log out. So we'll sign out. And we're going to go ahead and log in to our Active Directory domain. So what we need to do is we need to say other user. And I always like to preface it with the domain just to ensure that it allows us to log in correctly and it doesn't revert to the local computer. Do a harden, do our temporary password. And now it says that we need to change the password. Hit OK. Now, one thing that I want to show you here is I'm going to put in a very basic password. It's one, two, three. And hit the arrow. And what you're going to notice here is that it says that this password does not meet the length, complexity, or history requirements of the domain. So when you are working with Active Directory, there are some default complexity requirements. And in short, it requires a strong password and it'll tell you if it doesn't meet the requirements. Now, we're not gonna get into the details of the complexity requirements, but we can actually modify those per our need. And in reality, it's what you really think of uh, as, a, as a strong password. It's a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, special character numbers, and typically a minimum of eight characters. So we'll go ahead and change the password, click OK, and now it's going to go ahead and let us log in with our account. Now, what we can do while this is logging in for the first time, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go back to the server and in Active Directory Users Computers, I'm going to right click on this account. I'm going to go to Properties. I'll make sure I'm only highlighting one of them. Right click on this account, go to Properties. We'll go to Account and let's disable this account and hit Apply. And what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and log out of this account on the Windows 10 PC and log back in. And once that takes effect, and it may take a minute or two, sometimes it does, what will happen is it's going to show us that this account is logged out. All right, so we're going to try to log back in again. And there you go, it says your account has been disabled. Now, if you make the change on your server and you go directly back to your virtual machine about five seconds later and try to log in, it may not have taken effect on your domain controller and it may allow you to log in. So it may take about 10, 15, 30 seconds for it to take effect. Um, but understand it does take a little time for it to propagate out when you make that change, especially if you have more than one domain controller. So now what we can do is we can go back to our server and we can re-enable this account. Now a shortcut way of doing that is just right clicking on the account. So we can right click and we can go down to all tasks and we can re-enable this account. So this is a, another shortcut way of doing certain things, such as resetting the password, enabling the account, adding it to a different uh, security group. Um, so some additional things that we can do here. So let's enable this. And it shows you that this account has been re-enabled. And so again, we're going to give this a little bit of time to take effect. And after about 30 seconds, I'll try to log in again.
All right, so let's go back to our Windows 10 PC and now let's try logging in and see if it lets us back in. And there you go. It's gonna allow this user account to log back into its system within Active Directory. So that's gonna conclude our video where we do our introductory overview of managing user accounts within Active Directory. If you have any questions about what we covered, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.